Gorbachev teared down this wall. Russian imperialism, which of course has been a characteristic of Russian foreign policy for centuries. I'm not going to wear rose-colored glasses when it comes to Russia or Mr. Putin, and I'm certainly not going to say to him, I'll give him more flexibility after the election. First of all, we've got to realize what Vladimir Putin is. He's an old KGB colonel that wants to restore the Russian empire. According to our intelligence services, the Russian government has made a project of turning Americans against each other. Ancient history, relics of a bygone era, what Republicans used to say and sound like when they talked about Russia. Now, though, Donald Trump's allies in Congress seem downright eager to do Vladimir Putin's bidding, to say what, what Putin would want them to say. And it turns out, as of today, even some Republican lawmakers agree with that. After House Foreign Affairs Chairman Michael McCall told Puck News that Russian propaganda had, quote, infected a good chunk of his party's base, Yesterday, House Intelligence Chair Michael Turner agreed with that. Watch. We see directly coming from Russia the attempts to mask communications that are anti-Ukraine and pro-Russia messages, some of which we even hear being uttered on the House floor. I mean, there are members of Congress today who still incorrectly say that this conflict between Russia and Ukraine is over NATO, which, of course, it is not. To the extent that this propaganda takes hold, it makes it more difficult for us to really see this as an authoritarian versus democracy battle, which is what it is. Wow. Turner's concerns trace right back to the MAGA wing of his own party, one evidently taking orders from the boss. And now The Washington Post reports this, quote, Trump has privately said he could end Russia's war in Ukraine by pressuring Ukraine to give up some territory. That's according to people familiar with the plan. Joining our conversation, Isaac Arnstorf, national political reporter for The Washington Post. He's bylined on that new reporting about Trump's, quote unquote, plan to end the war in Ukraine. He's also the author of a new book out tomorrow called Finish What We Started, The MAGA Movement's Ground War to End Democracy. We'll get to that in a second. Um, Take me inside this reporting. I mean, this has been, I think, obvious to people not serving under the banners, or maybe it was obvious to them. I mean, take me, take me to how, how we got to this breakthrough. Well, I mean, basically, Trump sees two sides. Uh, Russia wants all of Ukraine. Ukraine wants all of Ukraine. And so Trump sees an opportunity to make a deal there. And as when he was president the first time, uh, he sees an opportunity. He thinks if, based on the force of his charisma and his negotiating skills, if he gets both sides in a room, he can make a deal. They can have a splashy announcement. And the details are not exactly what he's focused on. And his plan, uh, we should be clear, is to do something Zelensky is not for, to give up parts of Ukraine. Right. Zelensky has said under no circumstances will he agree to territorial concessions. Trump is uh, privately talk well, publicly what he says is, you know, I could solve this in 24 hours, even before I take office, but I'm not going to tell you how. It's a secret. And what we were able to figure out um, through people that he's shared this with privately is that the idea is basically he thinks that some territory, specifically Crimea and the Donbass border region, uh, he could see a Ukraine giving that to Russia and the war would end. And what about this extraordinary turn of t two House Republicans calling out their own caucus, their own party, for parroting Putin's propaganda? Well, I think we should be careful. Um, um, reasonable Americans can disagree about U.S. interests in the world and prioritizing commitments to Ukraine and European allies versus other foreign policy priorities. But when you see misinformation coming through that originated with Russian propaganda uh, and Americans repeating that, that's something else. Uh, and, and that's where they are, the Republicans are saying. Correct. That's extraordinary. I mean, Ben Rose, we've, we've watched it sort of in slow motion. Um, I didn't see Tucker Carlson's interviews with Trump because I watched The Daily Show's treatment of Tucker Carlson's trip and coverage of Russia. But to watch Yvonne Hilliard's reporting, my colleague here at NBC News, what Tucker Carlson reported from Russia is now coming out of the mouths of Trump supporters at rallies. It, it's, it's a, the circuit is complete. And it is sort of stunning to hear two sitting um, members of Congress say that members of his own caucus are parroting Russian propaganda. Yeah, I mean, it's because they are. I mean, they're literally uh, retweeting it. Uh, they've said it on the floor of the House. I think more fundamentally, though, it has enormous consequences. I mean, just take what came out in that reporting. First of all, Donald Trump cannot negotiate over the heads of the Ukrainians 
the removal of their territory and, and, and taking eastern Ukraine and Crimea and making it part of sovereign Russian territory. That's something that the Ukrainians would object to. But more fundamentally, let's think about who's there. We know what has happened in areas that have been occupied by Russia. We know that children have been separated from their families and taken into Russia. We know that war crimes have taken place. We know that massacres have taken place. So you want to normalize that and abandon those people that the United States under Joe Biden has made a commitment to defend along with all of our democratic allies? You want to send a message uh, to China that we're now in a new era where it's okay uh, to take uh, uh, territory through conquest when we have huge tensions over Taiwan and the U.S. military assesses that 2027 is the date at which uh, the Chinese military may be prepared for an invasion of Taiwan, right square in the next president's term. What about the Korean Peninsula, Nicole, where Donald Trump's close friend, Kim Jong-un, who he says literally he wrote love letters with, who he took those love letters with him to Mar-a-Lago because he was so committed to preserving them. What is Kim Jong-un going to take as a message uh, when he might perhaps want to make a move on South Korea? So this has enormous consequences. This is just not even like a bunch of chatter from Tucker Carlson. This is about fundamentally reorienting the United States of America away from defending the principle that sovereign territory cannot be claimed through military force. And living in a world in which the United States of America is no longer performing that function in, in, immediately becomes a much more unpredictable and dangerous place. You know, Ben, I, I also don't know that it's necessarily a, a separate conversation from the one we just had. Jamie Dimon putting out a statement to shareholders about autocracy and democracy, two House Republicans seeming to break with the mindless mutterings that parrot Russian propaganda, calling out their own caucus, saying they're parroting um, Putin's talking points. I guess my question for you is, is it too late? I mean, I, I think in this, in the Republican Party, it's way past too late. I mean, these guys speaking out, that's great, but they're not really in charge. Sure, they're nominally chairing these committees, but their words mean nothing. We know that the, the people in that caucus are ultimately going to take their direction from Donald Trump. Hopefully, we can squeeze through another package of assistance for uh, Ukraine somehow. But we all know what's on the ballot in November. What's on the ballot is whether the United States continues to play that role. What's on the ballot is whether Ukraine continues to have any kind of lifeline. It is too late to think that some Republican members of Congress, I think, can stand in the way of that. It's ultimately going to be up to the American people uh, about whether they care enough about that uh, to take a stand. Uh, and it, I think it does take as many people as possible to be raising the alarm bells. And again, making the point, the thing that Tucker Carlson does that's so dangerous, Nicole, and I I unfortunately suffered through that whole interview, <laughs> and I suffered through his weird videos. He took kind of a propaganda the video. Shopping carts. You'll have to explain. Yeah, is it the Moscow Metro that the yeah. Soviets built as a propaganda thing in the Cold War? And he's talking about how great the Moscow subway is. You know, it can appear like a television show. It can appear like this is just an extension of our tribal identity politics. Oh, I want to own somebody on a social media platform. Or the Democrats seem to like the Ukrainians, so we don't like them because that must mean they're on the other team. No, this is real world stuff that impacts people's lives, that's going to impact the security of this nation, that's going to impact the economy of this nation, because if there's an unraveling what remains of the international order, it's ultimately going to create all kinds of shocks, right? And so I think what's necessary is to communicate to people that the stakes about this are not the normal back and forth on television, on social media. This is deep, dangerous, real-world stuff. And there's a reason the Russians have spent years investing in the spread of this kind of misinformation, disinformation, and this kind of connectivity to the American right wing, because they're going to want a return on that investment. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.